is Mrs. Wainwright's math class, chapter 678, packet E, lesson 1. Today's lesson, add fractions. Today's learning target, by the end of this lesson, you should confidently be able to say, I can add fractions. Note 1. When adding or subtracting fractions, you must have common denominators. So the denominators must be the same in order to add or subtract fractions. Note 2. Final answers must be proper fractions, meaning they must be fractions that would work in a chicken fight. If not, you need to drop it into the division box and turn it to a mixed number. Final answers also need to be fully simplified. So there needs to be a 1 in the fraction, or the GCF needs to be 1. So let's take a look at example number 1. 3 sixths plus 1 sixth equals what? Well, step number one is to take our fractions and write them vertically. So I have 3 sixths plus 1 sixth with my equal bar. Step number two is to focus in on the denominator. The denominators must be common or the same. My denominators in these two fractions are both six. So my denominators are indeed already common. That's wonderful because now I'm ready to add. So when adding or subtracting fractions and the denom denominators must be common or must be the same, it's because they are going to stay the same in the answer. So my denominator is 6. We take the numerators, and this is addition, so we add them together. 3 plus 1. So I'm going to go ahead and solve this. 3 plus 1 equals 4. Denominator stays the same. I have the fraction 4 sixths. Now, I know that my fraction must be a proper fraction. So does 4 sixths work in a chicken fight? Yes, 4 is less than 6, so that is indeed a proper fraction. That's great. My next check is to see if my fraction is fully simplified. Well, in order for a fraction to be fully simplified, the GCF needs to be 1. A fast trick for that is to look at the fraction and see if there's a 1 in it. There is not a 1 in 4 sixths, so I should, should go ahead and find the GCF. If it's a 1, I'm done, and if it's not, I divide by the GCF to fully simplify. Remember that my F points horizontally. Remind me that I'm going to find my GCF of the numbers horizontally. So my fraction is 4 6. I have my 4 and my 6. GCF of the greatest common factor. What are the factors of 4? 1 times what equals 4? 1 times 4 equals 4. Does 2 work? Well, yes, 4 is divisible by 2. It has to work. 2 times what equals 4? 2 times 2. I already have a 2. So my factors of 4 are 1, 2, and 4. Let's find the factors of 6. 1 times what equals 6? Six? 6. Does 2 go into 6? It must. It's an even number. So 2 times what equals 6? 3. Does 3 go into 6? Oh, I already have a 3. So I am done. I'm going to go up to my first number, which is the 4. Look at my largest, because I'm looking for the greatest. Do I see 4 as a factor of 6? No. Cross it out. Do I see a 2 as a factor of 6? Yes. So my GCF is 2. I take that GCF, and I put it into a window box to divide and fully simplify. Simplifying is making the digits smaller, so I would divide, and I'm going to go ahead and divide 4 divided by 2 equals 2, 6 divided by 2 equals 3. So now I have the number 2 thirds. Is 2 thirds fully simplified? Well, I don't see a 1 in it, but I do see that these numbers are indeed in counting order, 2, 3, the difference between them is 1, right? They're only 1 away from each other, so that is indeed a fully reduced fraction. Therefore, I have found my final answer, 3 sixths plus 1 sixth equals 2 thirds. And that is my final answer. Please stop the video and complete worksheet number one right now.
So let's take a look at example number two. For example number two, we have the problem three-fourths plus six-fourths. Again, the first step is to write the problem vertically. Now I will focus in on my denominators, four and four. Yay, they're common. They're already the same. That's perfect. That means I am ready to go ahead and add. Denominators have to be common or the same because they stay the same. And I have three plus six. So let's go ahead and add three plus six equals nine. Denominator stays the same. I have nine fourths. So this is the answer that I will focus in on. First thing I need to do is my check is see, is this a proper fraction? Will it work in a chicken fight? And I look at that number and say, no way. Nine fourths will not work in a chicken fight. What happens when the answer is an improper fraction? We know what happens. Ah, boom. That larger numerator drops down into the division box pool. Now we're going to divide. 4 goes into 9 2 times. 2 times 4 is 8. 9 minus 8 equals 1. 1 is less than 4, which is great. There's nothing to bring down. Since I'm working with fractions, I write my remainder as a fraction. My remainder 1 becomes my numerator. My divisor 4 becomes my denominator, so I have 2 and 1 fourth. Now what do I need to do? Well now I need to just take a look at it, that answer, that 2 and 1 fourth, and I need to look at just the fraction, which is the 1 fourth. Is that fraction fully simplified? Well, I see that it's 1 fourth, and when there's a 1, my fraction is done. So that is a fully simplified fraction. Therefore, my final answer for example number 2, 3 fourths plus 6 fourths equals the mixed number 2 and 1 fourth. Please stop the video and complete worksheet number 2 right now. Let's take a look at example number 3. Liam has 2 fifths of a jar of Lucky Shamrocks. Sean has 1 fourth of a jar of them. If the boys put their lucky shamrocks together, how much will they have in all? Let's see what we know. First thing we need to focus on is the actual question. What is it asking us? And this question says, how much will they have in all? Oh, in all. What do I know about those words? Those are words that tell me that this is either an addition problem or it may be a multiplication problem. I'll figure that out as I go back to see my facts in the question. Let's see what the question tells me. It does tell me that Liam has two-fifths of a jar of the Lucky Shamrocks. If I picture Liam, I picture a jar, and it's about two-fifths full. It also tells me that Sean has one-fourth of a jar of those Shamrocks. I picture Sean's jar. They're full with different amounts. If this was a multiplication problem, I would be adding the same number over and over again. Well, in my picture, Liam has one jar that's a little bit full. Sean has one jar that's a little bit full. Is that adding the same number over and over again? No, because they're two totally different jars. So this cannot be a multiplication problem. This will have to be an addition problem. The addition problem that will be is two-fifths plus one-fourth. And since there isn't much room on this page, we'll move to some scrap paper to complete this problem. Again, our first step is to write our numbers vertically. So I have two-fifths plus one-fourth. My next step is to focus in my denominators of the fractions and see if they are common. 5 and 4 are not the same, so they are not common. Therefore, I am going to need to find the least common multiple or least common denominator to make equivalent fractions with common denominators, as we learned in Packet D Lesson 3. The LCM slash LCD. Remember that the LCM M points down, the bottom of the D points down. That reminds me that I am going to move vertically. It's fastest if I take my largest number, so I'll do my 5 and then my 4. And I go through my 5 times tables, 5. When I go through for my 4 times tables, do I say 5? 4, 8, no. Next to my 5 times tables comes 10. When I go through my 4 times tables, do I say 10? 4, 8, 12, no. After 10 comes 15. When I go through my 4 times tables, do I say 15? 
4, 8, 12, 16, no. My 5 times tables, 5, 10, 15, 20. When I go through my 4 times tables, do I say 20? 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, yes. So my LCM, LCD is 20, and that's what my new common denominator will be. Remember, set myself up with a window box, make a fraction bar, window box the next fraction with a fraction bar, and I'm going to take that 20 and make it my new common denominator. So now I have to go ahead and finish my fractions. 5 times what is 20? 5 times 4 equals 20. Whatever I do on the bottom, I must do on the top. 2 times 4, and 2 times 4 will equal 8. So I've turned 2 fifths into 8 twentieths. Now let's focus in on my bottom fraction, 1 fourth. What do I do to a 4 to turn it into a 20? I say 4 times 5. Whatever I do on the bottom, I must do on the top. 1 times 5 equals 5. Move over my addition sign and my equal bar, and I am ready to add. Denominators are now the same, and they stay the same, which is 20. Numerators are 8 plus 5. So I go ahead and add that. 8 plus 5 equals 13. I have the fraction 13 twentieths. I have to do my checks. First check is, is this fraction going to work in a chicken fight? Yes, 13 is smaller than 20, so that's good. It does not need to drop down into the division box. Next, I need to take a look at this fraction and see it if, if it is fully simplified. I will go to the next page to rewrite it since I seem to have run out of room on this page. So I've rewritten 13 twentieths. Again, I said that it is a proper fraction. It will work in a chicken fight. So all I'm looking for now is to see if I can fully simplify it. Well, I don't see a 1. I see a 13 and a 20. So I'm not sure if this is fully simplified or not. So what am I going to do? I'm going to check it out. And I'm going to simplify with the GCF. F reminds me horizontally. 13 is my numerator. 20 is my denominator. Let's find the factors. 1 times 13 is 13. Does 2 go into 13? Nope. Does 3 go into 13? 3 does not go into 4, so nope, 3 doesn't work. Does 4 go into 13? Nope. Does 5 go into 13? Uh, no, it doesn't end in a 0 or a 5. Does 6 go into 13? No, it wasn't divisible by both 2 and 3. Does 7 go into 13? 7, 14, nope. 8, 8, 16, nope. 9, 9, 18, nope. 10, 10, 20, nope. 11, 11, 22, nope. 12, 12, 24, nope. It's 13, I have it already. So the only factors for 13 are 1 and 13. What are the factors of 20? 1 and 20. 2 and 10. 3 doesn't work because 2 plus 0 is 2 and 3 doesn't go into 2. 4 does work. 4 and 5 equals 20. And that's it. Now I'm done. Focus on my larger number up top, which is the 13. Do I see 13 as a factor of 20? Nope, so cross it out. My next number is a 1. Do I see 1 as a factor of 20? Yes. So the greatest common factor of 13 and 20 is 1. When there's a 1, my fraction is done. So I do not need to put it in the window box. My final answer will be 13 twentieths. However, I just want to show you that if I did put it in the window box, it would indeed stay the same. 13 divided by 1 equals 13. 20 divided by 1 equals 20. It stays the same. Since this was a word problem, we'll go back and put our answer into a sentence. The question asked, if the boys put their lucky shamrocks together, how much will they have in all? The answer will be, in all, the boys have 13 twentieths. Hmm, what's my unit? Well, my question, how much will they have in all, doesn't tell me the unit. So go back up into the problem. We have two-fifths of a jar, one-fourth of a jar. So the unit will be jars. The, in all, the boys have 13 twentieths of a jar of lucky shamrocks. And that's our final answer. Please stop the video and complete worksheet number three right now.
And finally, we have example number four, which again is different than the other examples, and you will come across problems like this, so it is important for us to go through this example. Example number four is six-ninths plus two-thirds. So again, our first step is to write our problem vertically. Our next step is to focus in on the denominators and see if they are common. Nine and three are not common. Therefore, I am going to need to use, find the LCM or LCD of my, those denominators, 9 and 3. I have the LCM, which reminds me to go down, slash LCD. I'll put 9 first because it is the largest number, and then 3. When I go through my 9 times tables, I say 9. When I go through my 3 times tables, do I say 9? Yes, 3, 6, 9, woohoo! My LCM, LCD is 9, and that will be my new common denominator for this problem. So I put my window box, fraction bar, window box, fraction bar, and bring that 9 in as my new common denominator. Now I can go ahead and finish up that problem. <clears throat> and I say 9 times what equals 9? 9 times 1 equals 9. Whatever I do on the bottom, I must do on the top. And 6 times 1 equals 6. Let's take a look at the bottom fraction, 2 thirds. What do I do to the 3 to turn it into a 9? 3 times 3 equals 9. Whatever I do on the bottom, I must do on the top. So I get 2 times 3 equals 6. Put a plus sign and an equal bar. Now I'm ready to go ahead and add because I do have common denominators. My common denominator of 9 stays the same. I get 6 plus 6 for my numerators. Go ahead and add. 6 plus 6 is 12. So I have 12 ninths at this point for my answer. But we know when I have an answer, I always have to check for two things. First is to make sure that it will work in a chicken fight, that it is a proper fraction. Will 12 ninths work in a chicken fight? Oh no, that's not going to work. So what happens if it's not going to work? Boom, it drops down into the division box. And 9 goes into 12 one time. 1 times 9 is 9. 12 minus 9 is 3. I take my remainder and I write it as a fraction. 3 becomes the numerator. Again, my divisor becomes the denominator. So I have the mixed number 1 and 3 ninths. Finally, I need to check the fraction portion of this problem and make sure that that is fully reduced. Is 3 ninths fully reduced? Well, I don't see a 1 in it, so I'm not sure. Therefore, I'm going to have to find the GCF of my numbers to see if this is fully reduced. So I simplify with the GCF which goes horizontally. My fraction is 3 ninths, so I have 3 and 9. Factors of 3 are 1, and its partner is 3. Does 2 go into 3? 2, 4, no. 3, up. Oh, I'm done. Let's find my factors of 9. 1 times 9 equals 9. Does 2 go into 9? No, it's not even. Does 3 go into 9? Yes. 3 times what equals 9? 3 times 3. I already have a 3. I'm done. Look at my 3 right there. Do I see a 3 as a factor of 9? And yes, I do. So my GCF is 3. I must divide by that GCF. I am going to take this mixed number, 1 and 3 ninths, and I am going to divide in the window box by this GCF. I'll move to the next page to do so. So I have my 1 and 3 ninths make my window box and divide by my GCF which we said was 3 and I'm going to go ahead and divide don't forget to move my whole number over so I don't forget it too easy otherwise make my fraction bar and I will say 3 divided by 3 equals 1 I will say 9 divided by 3 equals 3 so my final answer is one and one third. So 
six ninths plus two thirds equals the mixed number one and one third. And that's my final answer. Please stop the video and complete worksheet number four right now. So to review, when adding or subtracting fractions, you must have common denominators. Final answers must be proper fractions that would work in a chicken fight, and final answers must also be fully simplified so that the GCF is 1. If the denominators are already the same, they stay the same, and you can go ahead and add your numerators. So 3 plus 1 equals 4, 6 stays the same. That gives me 4 sixths. I then need to fully simplify, so we find the GCF, and if it's anything other than 1, we put it in the window box and divide to fully simplify and bring those down to smaller digits. In this case, 4 sixths simplify to 2 thirds. If my denominators are not the same, like in 2 fifths and 1 fourth, I have to find my LCM, LCD of the denominators, and that LCM becomes the new common denominator. Find what the equivalent fractions are, and once you have that, those fractions with common denominators, you can go ahead and add. When you're done adding, you do need to go ahead and check your fraction. First, to make sure that, that it's a proper fraction. If it is, that's great. Then you can see if you need to simplify. Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. If the GCF is 1, you're done. And in this case, 13 twentieths, you don't need to simplify. But in this problem, my final answer was 12 ninths, which is an improper fraction. We dropped it into the division box. We came up with the mixed number 1 and 3 ninths. And then we did need to simplify because when we did the, found the GCF, the GCF was 3. So we needed to put that into the window box to fully simplify and get our final answer of 1 and 1 third. So hopefully by now, or at least after the practice in the class, you will confidently be able to say, I can add fractions. If you have any questions or concerns, please make sure to see the teacher. Good luck with this lesson.